In Guatemala's isolated hillsides, there's a mounting crisis of sexual violence against indigenous girls. Ni porque grita, nadie le va a escuchar. Children as young as nine are getting pregnant after being raped, forced into motherhood as abortion is illegal here. <laughs> With little or no help from authorities, the situation is desperate, but some are determined to find and support the girls. Me duele verla, pero me alegra su fuerza. Es un gusto llegar en los hogares de cada uno de nuestros radioescuchas a través del programa La Voz de las Mujeres. Since she was a teenager, Carmelina Shoko has been on a mission to help women and girls in Guatemala. Broadcasting from the small city of Caban, in the center of Alta Vera Paz, she tries to offer support to those being sexually exploited, often hidden away in the mountains and valleys of her native state. Siempre nos deja un nudo en la garganta, el dolor, la situación de las niñas que no hablan. Es una chiquita que todavía tiene todo el futuro para jugar, para brincar, para reír, para salir sin carga, pero no. Buenos días. Buenos días. ¿Qué tal? Bien, aquí. Carmelina works for OSA, an organization that supports victims of sexual violence. The scale of her task is overwhelming. Alta Vera Paz has the second highest rate of child pregnancies in the country, and Carmelina is their only caseworker here. Girls in this isolated area are particularly vulnerable. Police or even neighbors are out of earshot, and there's no phone signal to call for help. Las niñas, cuando ellas se quedan solas en sus casas, Muchos hombres se dan cuenta que mamá y papá no están en ese momento. Van a violentar a las niñas. Las casas, las viviendas están bien distanciado, uno acá, otro allá y así. Si un hombre llega a violentar a una menor de edad, ni porque grita, nadie le va a escuchar. Today we're visiting an 18-year-old who found herself in that terrifying situation and with few options. Raped and now pregnant, she asked Carmelina for help after hearing her radio show. It's not long before her due date, so Carmelina has brought a nurse along to check everything is okay. Una vez al mes. Ah, no vale. venimos porque no hay muchas casas ahí. Ah, vale. Ajá. Es por porque ella es muy embarazada. Ajá, sí. Pues. Ah, sí, entiendo. The 40-minute walk up the mountain is especially treacherous during the rainy season. It's crazy to imagine someone who's about to give birth will have to do this journey. Eso es la vivienda de María Cristina. Es muy alto. Habanú. Maria Cristina was home alone when she says she was targeted and raped by a neighbour, an older man. She was living here working for her great aunt. Her parents live nearby, but they won't let her return. They blame her for the pregnancy. I would think she's sick to get are you worried about having a baby? Are you worried about being a mother? 
Villagers are trying to make her live with the married man that she alleges attacked her to absolve the shame of rape. But Carmelina is teaching her that she has a choice. Carmelina bridges the gap between indigenous girls and a healthcare system that they're often navigating for the first time. Tiene las encías muy pálidas. Eso quiere decir que que tiene anemia. With limited time and state support, it's a constant battle for Carmelina to help as many girls as she can. When you find girls in this situation, like today, how do you feel? It's a sentiment very big. Because it's not just one, it's a lot. And we know that the state no lo está garantizando. Hay otras víctimas mucho más pequeñas que María Cristina. Y son mujeres que prefieren aguantar, prefieren pasarla solita. Y es por eso que nosotras aquí estamos presentes. ¿Está bien? Uh -huh. In the vast majority of cases, attackers are close family members or neighbours. COVID lockdowns provided the perfect conditions for abuse. In 2020, a staggering average of 13 girls between the age of 10 to 14 years old became pregnant through rape every day. And the impact on those children is devastating. Today, Carmelina is taking a 14-year-old girl who is pregnant through rape for an ultrasound. We're calling her Selma and not showing her full face because she's so young. Because Selma's body isn't developed enough, she'll have a caesarean. With a plan in place for the birth, Carmelina takes her back to the bus station. Selma lives two and a half hours from town. A long and expensive journey for her. Most of her care is done by Rosario Chub, who treks to her home. Rosario is an indigenous midwife who has no formal medical training but supports girls in poor communities as they prepare for motherhood. Selma was too scared to tell her mum what had happened, but the signs of pregnancy gave it away. While her parents worked in the fields, Selma says a seasonal worker crept in and raped her. Girls in Guatemala have few options because abortion is illegal unless the mum's life is in danger. The ordeal has robbed Selma of her childhood. What have your friends said about your pregnancy?
Across Guatemala, women and girls are still living with the impact of its brutal 36-year civil war, which ended in the mid-90s. During the conflict, more than 100,000 women were raped by security forces and paramilitaries as part of a genocidal campaign to systematically degrade indigenous Mayan communities. The legacy, its violence against women and girls, has become normalized. Han dicho que esto es parte de nuestra cultura ancestral. Para nosotros no. Para nosotras las mujeres, la violencia sexual sigue siendo la secuela que dejó la guerra interna. Le dejó marcado de ser el macho, el que manda, el que tiene el poder, el que tiene la fuerza para oprimir. But I'm going to meet a group of women refusing to accept this situation. Further north in the tropical area of Chizek, where child marriage and pregnancies are particularly common, the indigenous female collective Nali Bak is working to empower girls. Here young women learn the skills to become independent, growing crops they can sell. Elma has been working in the collective for five years. She mentors younger girls, teaching them their worth and how to recognize when they're being exploited. Violencia sexual. There's no sex education in schools in Guatemala, so community projects like this are vital for girls to understand consent and about their own bodies. Many girls are unaware that they've been exploited, making them more vulnerable. Yo les cuento a las niñas sobre mi cuerpo, sobre los derechos, sobre los tipos de violencia que ellas puedan eh, identificar o puedan decir no solo son ellas. Este, motiva a muchas niñas a que sigan estudiando, motiva a seguir adelante como para luchar y para que sean personas empoderadas. Teaching girls about their rights is one thing, but the system still doesn't work for those that need it. Only 3% of reported sexual violence cases in Guatemala are even investigated. And if they do reach court, the process takes years, and abusers can buy their freedom easily. But a campaign by activists and charities is underway to try and change that. They want to remove the option of bail for alleged rapists of children under the age of 14. It's inspired by the story of a girl called Angelina, who alleges she was raped by her 54-year-old neighbour when she was just 12. He paid just £400 to be released on bail, which means he's now back living right next door to her. We're about to go meet her, but because the case is ongoing, we're not going to show her face or where she lives. Anne Helena ended up pregnant after the alleged rape with twin girls, now aged two and a half. Angelina had to drop out of school at 13 so she could provide for them. But it's a struggle. She only earns £2 a day. Her story is so shocking that Carmelina was able to help her find a pro bono lawyer, an incredible rarity. <laughs> They got a restraining order, but Angelina's alleged attacker has gone on to build a property next door, she says, to intimidate her. It takes incredible bravery for Angelina and her mom to continue fighting. Do you have hope and confidence that one day you will get justice and you will feel safe in your community again? <laughs> Nick 
Is it difficult living in such a small community and knowing that he's here? It was really shocking to see how close Angelina's alleged attacker was living to her since she reported him he'd built this home just metres from her front door. But she's totally trapped in this situation because until the case gets to court in three years' time, he'll still be living next to her. And she's got no money to move away, she's got two children to care for, and of course, on top of all of that, she's still just a child herself. For most abused girls in poor rural communities, there's next to nothing available in state support to pay for therapy, childcare or education. But a pioneering shelter in the capital city is proving that things can be different. La Alianza is the first of its kind in Guatemala, a rare space where survivors of sexual exploitation can start to heal. Yes, it's to you. Yeah. How are you? This 11-year-old we're calling Marta is giving me a tour. Hey, la cocina más rico. Qué bien. Una buena guía. Tenemos que poner triste, enojado, feliz. Y ahora, para ti. The facilities here are a world away from what I've seen in Alta Vera Paz. Girls have access to therapy, music and art classes and are taught about their rights to protect themselves from future abuses. Carolina is the director of La Alianza. What's the youngest mother you've had here? 10 years old? 10? Yeah, 10 years old. Wow. And she almost died during the childbirth. Was it because her body was too small for Yes. Us? Their hearts are not prepared, their bodies are not prepared, their minds are not prepared. We are a place where the victims need to know that they have been victims have, and they, they were victimized. And after that, they need to be, to recognize themselves as survivors as resilience and then they can represent themselves in front of the courts, the states or the system. At La Alianza, they help young girls by providing a nursery, looking after their babies so the girls can complete their education. But raising a child born through rape can sometimes prove too difficult. This baby's 14-year-old mom has recently moved out of the mother and baby unit after deciding she can't raise her child. The baby will be looked after by this nurse until she's put up for adoption. It's clear the infant is feeling the separation. She's suffering. She knows that something is happening. But it's better now than years after. And the mother is clear, clear that she doesn't want the baby. How old is the baby? Un año. Un año. Yeah. Es difícil para usted. Mucho. Yo la siento mucho. Sí. Yo la tuve mucho tiempo conmigo. Yo dormía conmigo porque su mamá no no podía. Y siempre ella siempre siempre estuvo conmigo cuando lloraba. Estaba aquí la mamá. Ay, no me quiero, no me quiero, no me quiero, no me quiero. Yo la cargaba, la cargaba y no se me da por qué. How does a girl who's had a child through rape ever bond with that child? Is it possible? Not always. We have many of these girls that they don't want to see their, their bellies. They say to us, I don't want to see, I don't want that. We never forced nothing, but we try to keep them together. The girls have no choice about becoming mothers so young because abortion is illegal, even in cases of rape and incest. Do you think that there should be more options for 
these girls? I am not with this very binary uh, thought that yes or no. Everyone has to choose for because it's, it's her own body. The shelter helps the girls deal with their trauma. <laughs> Finally feeling safe means they can enjoy some of the simple pleasures of being a child. It's amazing that for a place that's full of girls who have been completely traumatised by their experiences, at how much laughter you hear. But places like this barely exist in Guatemala and it makes me think just how different it could be for some of the girls that we've met in rural communities where there's hardly anything to help them. The Guatemalan government has been accused of not doing enough to tackle what is essentially a public health emergency. Today the minister responsible for sexual violence and exploitation happened to be visiting La Alianza so I approached her to ask a couple of questions. Is this issue a priority for your government? Sí, es prioridad para el gobierno en en la en la institución que yo represento. What would you say to those girls who um, have been raped, are pregnant through rape, who have been abandoned by their families and feel abandoned by the government too? Yo lo primero que les puedo pedir es perdón. Eh, pedir una disculpa porque no hemos funcionado como un sistema de protección. Sin embargo, eh, también decirles que desde la Secretaría estamos comprometidas en apoyar los esfuerzos y las instituciones como la Alianza. A la, hay otras instituciones que también trabajan en sanar esas heridas. Five hours north in Alta Vera Paz, Carmelina continues her life's work. Fighting against not just the behaviour of individual men, but a culture and justice system that often lets them get away with it. Necesitamos que las jóvenes, que las niñas, estén empoderadas sobre su cuerpo para que sean escuchadas y que también los agresores aprendan a respetar a la mujer y la justicia, esperamos que llegue y que llegue pronto.